Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How are you today, my friend? Hey, grab yourself a cup of tea and join us for the next few minutes. You will be glad you did. And if we have a, some new viewers, I want you to know how welcome you are. Don't let it be the last time. And I could never, you know, go by without saying thank you to the regular viewers. In fact, before I come down from my office a while ago, I was going through some of the mail. And I just can't tell you how you warm my heart with the wonderful, wonderful words of encouragement and email and all. Uh, it's great, great to connect with you. You're going to be glad you joined us today because I have two uh, authors with me who worked on the same book, Shaping Your Family Story. And I just want to preface everything by saying, pastors, you need this book. Uh, this would be a good book to, for a group study and all that. It's just a wonderful book on parenting. And I think we need it, don't we, today in the church and uh, the world as well. And David Welday III and James L. Cofield, a uh, Christian psychologist who was a professor also, and David works in uh, marketing and publishing, joined together to write this wonderful book called Shaping Your Family Story. And let me tell you something, as one who's getting older, I have eight great-grandchildren, there's something about that family story that comes into focus, and you'd really like to know more and more about your ancestors. And so... Uh, this book is so appropriate uh, for the time being and and also I think parents have a bigger job today because they have to battle culture more than maybe when I was being raised. So there's a lot to talk about with these gentlemen. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We got a recipe out of Weight Watchers. So some of you have been asking for those kind of things. This really looks good. It's a creamy bean soup that... Um, I think could really be an entree. And before I join her, I would like to again thank you for your connection with this program and for the financial blessing you are to it and remind you we are viewer supported. And um, actually, every program is viewer supported. It's just different ways. Sometimes it's uh, a product and sometimes it's, uh, you know, joining something. But actually... Programs have to be viewer supported. That's the only way we can stay on the air. And so uh, we're going to put the information on your screen. If you like to give by credit card, that's 1 800 229 Or you can write to me at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. And I certainly thank you in advance for the wonderful, wonderful friend you are to this program. And I'm here with Sister Stephanie. Yes. Uh, I wonder how many of our viewers remember Linda Brown because there's something about we all real proud of her. She's an amazing person. She was uh, on staff here for far more than a decade. Mm -hmm, she? Mm -hmm. And we always knew she did her best, but she wasn't real happy here. Mm -hmm. It wasn't her heart. Because the Lord called her to the mission field and through home keepers. She has been on the mission field in Africa for how many years now? five to seven somewhere. I, I'm not good at time, but it's been a while. And she built a school there. She built a school. Mm -hmm. It is just the most exciting thing. She got ordained. Uh-huh. Yep. She's amazing. Anyway, you went to a party yesterday yeah. for her. She's one of those people that you, everyone thinks that you're their, her best friend. Mm -hmm. When I went through radiation, she texted me every single day. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter what she That's was doing. Right. And she helped me count down and kept my spirit up and She's just one of those friends. So we uh, certainly wish you a happy birthday. Yes. All right. Uh, okay, I'm going to get, I have oil in the pan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get onions and garlic in there sauteing. And then maybe you can stir that while I get the, con what or do, do you want to do that? I'm going to have you stir this. Okay. Yeah, onion. I don't have a food processor at home, and that's why I look so dumb when I'm <laughs> trying to use it here. But see, my family are all grown and gone, mm -hmm. So, and what do I need one for? So you just make soup and salads at home? Yeah, I do. Okay, if you want to saute this, okay. that's just oil, onion, and garlic. Mm -hmm. I have a can of um, chickpeas and a can of can cannelli beans. Do you know what I'm going to like cannon. about this is the consistency. Yes, this is going to be yummy. And then I have a half a cup of um, vegetable broth or chicken broth. And it's got cream in it. And it has cream in it. So I'm just going to mesh this up. I hope. There we go. This is going to be yummy. Yeah. 
And we're also putting cheese in it and a little bit of cream, a little bit of pepper. Mmm. This is gonna be easy. This is easy peasy. Mm -hmm. I like easy. You know, um, the soups nowadays could easily be an entree. Oh, for sure. This one yeah. could be. This one's gonna be good with just some, maybe a, well, you, if you're on Weight Watchers, you probably don't want bread, but. <laughs> a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> Okay, so you have that saucing. You want it to, if you're at home, let this saute a little bit longer. Yeah. But we're gonna speed cook here a little bit. So I'm just taking this puree, just a can of uh, beans, uh, two cans of beans. Yeah, it was chickpeas. Uh, chickpeas and cannoli. Can, yeah. And then I'm gonna put two and a half cups of, it calls for vegetable broth. We got chicken broth. We got chicken broth. Do you want to apologize to Susan for that? No. Uh, yeah, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm going to crank this heat up. It oh, just needs to heat up a minute. Is... Then we're going to put the cheese. We're going to put the half and half. And that's and pepper, and that's it. Uh huh. I mean, how simple. And it says you can use pretty much any bean you want to in this. And if you're on Weight Watchers, it's a cup and a quarter, and it's five points. That's always helpful to know. Well, mm. there's so many diet plans out there and weight loss, but boy, Weight Watchers paved the way and they, they really stay current. Yes, you know? yes. This reminds me of um, like a northern bean soup without the ham hock, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, we might miss the ham hock. <laughs> yeah, well, some of us. Yep, so I'm just cranking this up, trying to get it to mm -hmm. heat up a little bit. We'll go ahead and put some half and mm -hmm. half. And cheese, what are you looking for? I was looking for a bowl. Oh, well. That would be nice. <laughs> oh, here we go. A <laughs> little bit of pepper. See, here's the thing. When we're taping right now, yeah. we're on the verge of Hurricane Irma, and we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so our minds, although I'm here, some of our minds are just elsewhere. We're just thinking, do we need to plan? Do we need to leave? What do we need to do? We're praying. Yes, we're praying a lot. You know, we've had this happen before. They're saying, it's coming, it's coming, and then it doesn't come. And then we're afraid that it's going to be the one time they say it's coming and it actually does. Yeah, so, and I keep remembering when Jesus was in the boat and all everybody got scared. Yes. So. Yes, I was in Sam's Club this morning and people were literally running mm -hmm. with their big carts to get water. And I was like, okay. Well, <laughs> after you see the horrible, horrible devastation of Harvey. Yes. It, it takes on new it meaning. It will scare you, yes. But there's no need to be rude. That's all I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to elbow me out of your way. You can go. It's okay. I, she has been talking all morning about the way she was treated at Sam's. It okay, was, this got to cook a lot a longer. A lot longer. Taste it. Yes, I just want you to be we able to taste, taste it before it we go. Mm -hmm. uh, let's put it on low. It'll be my lunch. Oh, my. Is it good? That is so rich, and that was only like a half a cup mm. of half and half. That it is needs so to cook a lot, creamy. lot longer. Yeah, it is yeah. so creamy, but I really recommend. I mm -hmm. taste wonderful. That's a super simple soup. Yeah. So if you want the recipe, doesn't cost you anything. Just email us or write to us, and if you write to us, send us an envelope with your address and your stamp on it, and we'll get it out to you. I really think that you would uh, like to have this. Great, great soup for fall and winter. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, stay with me. I want you to meet the authors of a wonderful book on parenting. You're going to enjoy them. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may send your email request to artheline at rippy.org. Or you may write to us at the address on your screen. And in doing so, please include a self-addressed stamped envelope. We thank you for being a part of our Homekeepers family. Right. I told you at the top of the program about Shaping Your Family Story. I think a very important and different book on parenting. I've, I've read a lot of books on parenting through the years and thank God for every one of them. I think I even remember a time when there wasn't much out there. And then people like Tim LaHaye and Dr. Dobson and Dr. Henry Brandt, people like that came along 
and uh, God keeps sending us good ones. And we got David Welday the third, who is a marketing strategist and a coach, and also psychologist uh, Jim Cofield. Uh, you're a t professor, and you do pri private counseling. Um, I went to a marriage counselor once, and um, um, it's a pretty smart thing to do, and especially someone like yourself who has a degree in psychology, and you also know the Lord. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's important because just secular psychology doesn't always put you on the right track, does it? Well, I think it's, it's hard to think about what would you do in counseling if you didn't believe in redemption. You know, we, we serve a God who redeems. And when God writes his story, his story always comes back to redemption. And I'm not sure how you counsel if yeah. you don't believe that, uh, if, if you believe the tragedy is the end of the story, then how, how do you counsel? And I think if you stop any story at the wrong place, you might have a tragedy. But, but God is writing our stories. He's writing the, the great story of, of hope and redemption. Yeah, I was thinking the word hope. Mm. He always gives us that. And uh, David, um, you're a marketing strategist and you work for some nonprofits. I do. I work for for-profit companies, nonprofit companies. I'm a publisher. So I, for a living, I help people share their stories. You get the word out. Absolutely. Well, stories, story is the, is the language of the culture. People connect with stories. Mm -hmm. You go to church, you might not remember the five points of your pastor's sermon, but you'll probably remember the story that he shared. Yeah, any illustration probably. Absolutely. Now, how did the two of you get together to write a book? Well, I, um, uh, I felt like the Lord had downloaded to me some of these parenting principles uh, that I wrote in a book that was originally going to be called Winning Parent because I thought, well, I'm a boomer, so who doesn't want to win at parenting? And yeah. we ultimately realized that, that that title didn't connect with our audience. But after I'd finished the draft, I really felt sort of a check in my spirit. I felt like the Lord said, hold, because I don't have a whole lot of pedigree other than being a dad and loving being a dad. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like the Lord wanted me to partner with somebody that had a lot more expertise. Uh, um, and so I paused and then happened to meet Dr. Cofield and so I approached him about, would you be willing to partner with me in this message? And he was very gracious in being willing to do so. And so the two of us got together and broke it all down and, and rewrote the whole book, bringing all yeah. of his depth of wisdom and, and expertise to it. So well, it was it wonderful. Seemed, it seems like a good, good combination here. Um, you have a lot of hands-on, I suppose. Uh, what percentage would you say you're load as a psychologist would be in the parenting realm? I think at some level, since this parents are how God shapes us, uh, family is how we're shaped, uh, even people that are coming in for other reasons, their family has left an imprint, their family has left a major impact because of, of the way they've been parented. For good so, or for bad. But that's, mm -hmm. that's true. And so parenting is a, is a piece of almost every story, but, yeah. but I'd, I'd say uh, I'd, I'd say a good 50% of the people that I'm seeing from time to time will, will have uh, something specific about dealing with their children or dealing with, uh, dealing with their parents at times or dealing with their grandchildren. There's just uh, th that those questions are always stirring inside our souls. Now, I have, uh, my children are grown in their 50s and, and I have great grandchildren and very thankful that my greats are in Christian school or they're being homeschooled. Uh, with your uh, experience, don't you think it's a lot tougher now because of the culture? I was raised in a culture where the government and the school, we kind of all agreed, kind of agreed on the Ten Commandments. You know, there, there, there was an agreement, but now it's, it's like parents are on an island all by themselves. That, you, you, I couldn't have said it any better. Uh, there is a way in which in today's day, um, everybody seems so distracted. Uh, and in some ways, we're all connected with our phones and computers, but in so many other ways, we're so disconnected from each other. And when God is telling his story, it's always about connection. When the evil one is writing the story, it's about isolation. And so many kids feel isolated. So many parents feel isolated. And it is a it's a culture that really is, is very isolating as well. And so um, you're exactly right. I think today is, 
it's a little harder. There's a there's a much more there's so many more competing messages out there and um, so many more opportunities to be distracted, to be numbed, to be to be pulled away. Well, and you uh, you referred to it earlier. Uh, used to be that uh, parents would follow the general wisdom of the culture, which was somewhat in line with Judeo-Christian yeah. values. Uh, everybody wants to be a good parent, but but few parents will actually reach out and 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 read a book about it. And so they we kind of get our parenting wisdom just from the culture. Which as long as the culture is going <laughs> in line with your biblical values, that's all right. But over the decades, it, we've done this subtle shift to now you've got biblical wisdom and cultural wisdom that are now going in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. For example, used to be that uh, in the culture or in, the, in our biblical standards, we understand that we train up a child in the way that he should go. And so our role as a parent is to help shepherd our children into this godly way in which God has called them to go. But the culture now is saying, oh, no, 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 don't put your values on your kids. Let them discover them for themselves. Let them figure it out for themselves. And so one of the things that we surface in the book is finding those places where the common wisdom, the cultural wisdom, may not be lining up with, with godly wisdom and giving a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when your kid comes home from school and they've been taught something that's totally opposite to everything you believe, then you have to have a way of explaining that. And, and I would say making your way uh, superior. I heard Chuck Swindoll once say that that's wonderful scripture, train up a child in the way that he should go. Um, and he's saying, find the bend of that child like a, a, a branch. Now my mother used to say this, and uh, probably a lot of other mothers said the same thing. Four kids says, I treated them all just the same. Well, that, that's nice. But I think with more understanding, you, you need to learn how these four kids are different. Mm -hmm. And I have n nothing but good things to say about my parents, that's for sure. But uh, that's kind of the outlook we had. But the God, through the Holy Spirit, can show us at the differences in, the ki in these children and how we lead them individually. That's true. In the book, we try to talk about that as well. The idea that um, is your son or daughter an introvert or an extrovert? And I mean, how do they process information? And becoming curious and being a reflective parent, thinking about the way they were wired. When Chuck Golson was talking about that verse with you, he, in, in Hebrew, the idea of raising up a child in the way he should go, the, the text in, in, in the original text is, uses the same language that it would say when the, a reed is bent and the way the, yeah. and so the idea is, is to understand the bent of your child, understand the way that they're wired and then they will, uh, and so it, it's very true that we should uh, be curious about how our children are wired and how we're wired as parents. What do we tend to notice and not notice? And so we try to cover that in, in, um, in the text as well. Um, I, was, uh, I was telling David, I think, that I have such wonderful children following the Lord and leading their children that way and all. And I still think things I could have done a lot better. <laughs> Is there just a universal parental guilt? Absolutely. I think every parent secretly thinks they're totally screwing up their kids. <laughs> um, and so even You're when, giving me a lot of comfort. <laughs> well, even when you offer some help, pa parents sometimes want to resist it because there's this I already feel bad enough as it is. In fact, uh, Jim and I both said we wanted to write a parenting book for, for parents who hate parenting books <laughs> because uh, this is not a, all the things that you did wrong that you should have done differently. This is yeah. a, a guilt-free book um, because the truth of the matter is all of us are off course at different mm -hmm. times. This is a book specifically for imperfect parents who desire to create hope and promise for their kids. And yes. so uh, an airplane spends... Most of it's time off course. If you're flying from Tampa to Nashville, you might take off and land on time, but al along the way, that GPS is constantly making course corrections. Well, if your GPS can do that, how much more can God help you? So no matter how far afield you feel you've gotten as a parent, the good news is, the hope is, again, as Jim said, the redemptive nature of God is bringing us back. Wherever you are in your story, yeah. there is a way back. You know, and, and there's a, 
and, and this is also kind of not only a, a book for people who don't like parenting books, it's also a book that's not a formulaic book. I mean, yeah. we live in a world where sometimes missionaries' kids become drug addicts, and drug addicts kids sometimes become missionaries. And so you say, it must not be a formula. Instead, there must be some principles. There must be some ways to think about parenting in a Christian way, in a biblical way that, that would be helpful. But it's not a formula. We, we so often, we're looking for the magic bullet or the five things that you, if you do this, then always turns this will into be the this. the outcome. Right. And, and, I, and I think God is so much more creative than that in the way he writes our stories, the way he writes uh, the, his, his imprint on our lives. And so it's not a formulaic book. Instead, it's a book that gives broad principles and categories that are practical for parenting. Uh, and in case you just joined us, I'm talking about shaping your family story. And you will see uh, super, we call them supers, uh, the names of these gentlemen as they are talking, but they all have the same website and you can go there. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. And, sure. And I, I would again uh, say this should be in every pastor's uh, library. I can, I can see great teaching material here. And I, I heard the term once and I've used it, uh, intentional parenting. I have two friends who described their upbringing this way, said, I was a potted plant. They watered me and they fed me. And that was about all the input. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm afraid that's more common than we realize. Have you had those kind of people in your office? Well, sure. And I think there's always times that there's times we, we're not sure what to do. And some, so often we don't do anything when we don't know what to do. Or we sometimes fall off the other side and we over control when we don't know what to do instead of the, kind of the invitation to engage our children when we don't know what to do. But yeah, there are parents who after a while they feel like they've made so many mistakes. I've had so many parents say to me this phrase, oh, I just think it's too late. Or I've made too, yeah. and it's just too late, too late to, nope. and, yeah. and that's, that's, it's, it's never too late to, to, send a, uh, to, to send a good lesson. Even parents, and I think sometimes parenting our kids when we're, they're older uh, is sometimes more difficult than when they're younger. But you can still teach them um, by example in those cases uh, for your older children to see, oh, so this is, how, this is how someone deals with disappointment or this is how when someone deals with, there's so much that they're watching and, and uh, even as they get older. Um, and so there's, there's something, uh, there's so, it's not too late, I yeah. guess I would say, for isn't, all of us. Isn't it true that I guess God creates children with this desire to their parents because sometimes you hear stories where parents were a complete zero and and, and, and they were abusive and, they were, and and that child still wants some kind of a connection with them when if it were anything but a parent you'd write them off say forget that but it must be some God-given instinct well, I think God puts on all of us I mean you think in the Bible how often the Bible is uh, very, f the language God uses is familial. He talks about fathers and he calls us sons and daughters because of the, the, the that's supposed to evoke something in us because we long to be a part yeah. of, we long to belong, we long to be a part of family. And as long as a parent, as long as a child still believes that they can earn their parents' respect, the parent still has power in their lives because they long for that. You're, that's been put in there by God, a longing to, for a father to be proud, a mother to enjoy and delight in. That, that's, that's in all of us. And so uh, as long as that still, uh, as long as the child still believes that they can earn those things or those things are still available, the parents has, has still has a lot of power even as the kids are older. And, and you so know the culture today wants to minimize the role of a parent oh, yeah. as if it's what's really important is is the school or the education or all of these other Government. forces which have a real role to play but the way God wired us, as you pointed out, is, is there something yeah. sacred about the family and the role of a parent? Um, years ago, I was uh, leading a, a, a conference on Christian education, and I was in the green room ready to go out and uh, introduce po folks. And I was really asking the Lord for sort of just a, a fresh word, something uh, that I could deliver that would be meaningful. And in that moment, God gave me a picture that has profoundly impacted me. It really impacted, it was really the beginning of this book. It was a woman in labor. She was getting ready to deliver. She was great with child. And there was a midwife that was with the woman. And the midwife was wiping the sweat off the woman's brow and whispering words of encouragement to her. 
And when it came time to deliver, the midwife got down at the other end and literally helped to deliver that child into the world. And I felt like the Lord said in the same way that that child was very much alive while he was still in his mother's womb. He just had not yet been birthed into the world. So too, there's a generation of young people among us who are very much alive. Some of them are two, some of them are 12, some of them are 20, mm -hmm. but they've not yet been birthed into the very purposes, the story mm -hmm. for which I created them. Now a youth pastor, a children's pastor, a coach, they're like the midwives. They have an incredibly important yeah. role to play. For some, it's life and death. But the real mantle of responsibility for seeing our children birthed into the very purposes, walking in the story that God had for them, is with mom and with dad. Yeah. Uh, before we run out of time, um, why uh, in the title a story instead of a history? Hmm. Well, I think stories are evocative. I mean, if you think about the Bible, about a third of the Bible's narrative. Mm -hmm. You think of the way Jesus taught. He, he taught by telling stories. Oh, yeah. And, and there's something about a story that's evocative. And I think what we're trying to say in the title of the book is that, that God is the great author. And he's telling a story, his story, ultimately through all of our lives. Mm -hmm. and, and that we are a part of a story. I, years ago, over in Orlando, there was a Star Wars convention. 30,000 people show up at this Star oh, Wars my word. <laughs> dressed like Wookiees and, and, and stormtroopers. Very and glad I missed that one. It was one. <laughs> a sea of mental illness. It was the craziest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> but my, my oldest son's autistic and he loves space. And so he and I went to this, at this, this thing. And as I looked around at all these people, 30, 40 years after the first movie came out, mm -hmm. all dressed and giving up their vacations to come to Orlando and dress like these characters, I thought, it's amazing how faithful people are to a story. Yeah. And, and Star Wars is a fine story told well. Oh, yeah. But God's telling a better story, mm -hmm. a, a, a grand story of hope and redemption. Mm -hmm. And to think that we can have a part of oh, that yeah. story and to think that part of our parenting is a, is a part of that story and, and our children will echo into eternity with that story as well. And I think sometimes we get lost in a smaller story. We get mm -hmm. lost in... What did yeah. we do today? What yeah. was, and we miss the fact that parenting is, a, is an invitation to be a part of that story. And, and that's his plan. We are out of time, but um, these gentlemen from the Orlando area, that's not that far away. You can come back because we have barely scratched the surface of this wonderful book. And I feel that on a program called Home Keepers, we should be dealing with parenting. So please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's okay, we'll program, our... you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.